Ladies and gentlemen, Ali Alfai. How you guys doing? That bad, huh? <laughs> I said, how you guys doing? They're having a good time. What's going on there? They're having their own party. My name is Ali Sayed. I'm from Dubai. Make some noise if you live in Dubai or from Dubai. So I'm happy to be back here, man. I just got back from Qatar. I just flew in from Qatar. By the way, I've heard there's some Qataris here. Where are my Qataris at? Yeah, Qatar. Man, I love you guys. I love your country. I had a great time there. I spent one week in Qatar. It was beautiful. But the flight to Qatar is ridiculous. Have you guys flown to Qatar? It took me longer to walk through Dubai International Airport than it took me to fly to Qatar. And you know, you know when, when you're flying and you're, you're in the air, they get to the altitude they want you to go to, and then the, the pilot makes some announcements you know, of irrelevant information like, the temperature outside, you know, as if you're going to take a walk. It's like, the temperature outside is 26 degrees or minus 26 degrees. You're like, great, I need a jacket. I'll be okay. Or he'll, he'll tell you uh, the speed of the plane. Oh, great, I have my seatbelt on. That works. But it, they're good, you know, in this flight, when we got to the altitude that we're at, the pilot made a different announcement. He went on the intercom and said, cabin crew, prepare for landing. I said, what happened? We just got here. Why are we landing already? But they're a good airline, you know. They want to feed you. Even though it's a short flight, they want to feed you. So this guy came to me, a South Asian uh, guy came to me and said, Sir, would you like chicken or wedgie? I said, dude, your seats are so tight, I already have a wedgie. He said, okay, it will be chicken then. He comes back 30 seconds later. I'm expecting my lunchbox. This guy comes to me and says, Sir, Open your mouth. I'm like, what? He's like, quickly, I have 30 rows to go. What was that? He said something, never mind. So anyway, if you've been to Qatar, you know that when you're landing, you can see the main road in Qatar, right? Right, Qatar guys? You can see the city. I was scared because I saw a white land cruiser with two Qataris in it. And the conversation sounded like this, or I think would have gone like this. I said, Abud, Abud, look, aeroplane, race, let's race it, day one, trust me. So I'm back, I'm back here, in, so when I landed in Qatar, right, so I called my friend, I said, hey, I'm staying uh, in Qatar for a week, so let's meet while I'm here. He said, great, absolutely, uh, you know, where are you staying? I said, I'm staying at a hotel. He said, Habibi, why you didn't tell me? I have an extra room, ya akhi. you can live with, yani, I stay next to the airport. I said, Habibi, this is Doha. Everybody next, lives next to the airport. That's loud. So then, then he, you know, he picks me up and we're, we're going somewhere. He said, listen, I know you guys in Dubai like to talk about your big towers and you like to talk about, uh, you know, the big places you have in Dubai Mall. I'm going to take you to the best place in Qatar. Dubai has nothing like this. I said, great, Allah, where, where, where are we going? What's this place called? He said, it's called City Center. I'm like, yeah, that's from Dubai. So I'm back here. And, you know, in Dubai, we have so many nationalities right now. People, we don't say hello to each other anymore. We have a, we have a question. Every time we meet somebody, we're, we're going to ask them a question. Like this guy came up to me and, and uh, you know, now we don't say hello or marhaba or kifak sabah. Now we're like, where are you from? And we have our own game. It's called the guessing game, right? It's like, oh no, guess where I'm from. Arabs, we take it to an extra level. We're like, okay, wait, wait, wait. I will tell you where you are from. This guy looked at me and said, you have wide eyes like China. You are Chinese. You are from China. I got paranoid. I asked an older Chinese woman. I said, do I look Chinese to you? She said, oh, you know Chinese. You too tall. You too fat. You too hilly. You too ugly. Chinese people are rugu. Didn't work. But people ask me all the time, so how come we don't see many locals in, in Dubai? You know, I have a statistical, very intellectual answer. I'm like, well, you know, if two million people living in Dubai, and this is the percentage of locals living here and so on. I thought I was right until I went to Bangkok, Thailand last year. That's where all the locals are. 
I landed in Thailand. I was there 10 minutes. And I started running into people. I'm like, hey, I know you. We grew up together. Dad. <laughs> but, you know, Thai people are like Arab people. You know, they'll, they'll tell it to you right in your face, right? I was, I was, uh, I was sh- uh, shopping, and I went to a uh, shop, and the shop lady came up to me. And I was looking at a shirt, and she came up to me and said, no, 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 no. You fat boy, this is not your size. Wait a minute, I get you your size. So I got offended, you know, I, I walked away. She said, wait, wait, come back here, fat boy. Fat boy, I have your size. So I, you know, come. But it's good, man. Arabs, make some noise, Arabs. Round of applause. Where are my Arabs at? Enthusiastic, I like that. <laughs> We have a lot of stereotypes. Like the other day I was at the bank. I was wearing my kandora, my, my traditional clothes. And I'm waiting to see uh, the teller. And this, uh, the branch manager comes running to me. He said, sir, are you okay? I said, I'm fine, thank you. Why do you ask? He said, you're standing in line. So other time I was at a party. I'm networking with people. And I was the only Arab there. Same thing. I'm in my uh, national clothes. And I'm exchanging business cards. The music was great. Halfway through the party, they stop the music. And somebody gets on the mic and says... Um, hello, excuse me, will the owner of a blue SUV please move your car, you're blocking my car. At which point, 350 heads turned in my direction. They were looking at me like I shot Tupac, right? I thought that was racist, that they would assume that, you know, and you know what I thought was more racist? They actually made me move my blue SUV. That was a little too much. <laughs> but Arabs, why, why do we insist on not speaking to each other in Arabic? It's usually the ones who speak bad English, right? The other day I was lost and I asked a fellow Arab in Arabic for directions. But he wanted to tell me in English, so my friend, my friend, listen to me. Take the first lift, you go down, and then you bark your car next to the accelerator. I said, where? Accelerator, Habib, you don't know accelerator? What is this guy? The other time I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation, right? I'm spent a... There's a room full of CEOs. I'm doing my thing. And I was nervous. And, you know, I left. And this guy comes after me. He's like, Ali, 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 Ali. That was great. It was a great job. And you make an amazing bitch. Today itself, we receive five bitches. But your bitch was fantastic. <laughs> Maybe you should speak in English. The party is starting back there. So I heard there, there aren't many uh, Lebanese people in PR, right? I'll tell you why. Because press releases have to be in Arabic, and that's difficult for Lebanese Arabic. But um, any Lebanese people here, by the way? Really? You're wearing a, wearing a kandora. Just see the guy in the back. Any Lebanese people here? Oh, him. One. I just went to Lebanon for my first time uh, a few months ago. Now, here's the thing. Lebanon is a beautiful place, but there's a, a rule that they don't tell you in Lebanon hotels. I call it the two-knock rule. That is, if you go to a hotel, you say, oh, knock on your hotel room door twice. And if you don't answer, they're just going to assume that you're not there and come in. Now, I didn't know that. It's my first time in Lebanon. I had one day there. I said, you know what? I'm just going to go and take a shower, and then I'm going to go outside and take a walk. All right? I'm going to explore Lebanon. So I'm there, you know, my first time. I don't know about you guys now. When I shower, I usually do it naked. It's a personal choice, right? So I'm taking a shower, and I'm coming out of the bathroom, and apparently there were two knocks. I know this because there was a gentleman with a platter of sweets standing outside my hotel room door. He looked at me. Now, here's, here's why this is awkward. We had made eye contact, right? But he was a professional. He looked me straight in the eye. He said, Beirut Hospitality. Now, I'm nervous. I don't know what to do with this guy. You know, I'm, you know how I shower. So I'm, I, we made eye contact. So I, I was like, okay, okay, okay. I looked him straight in the eye. I said, well, Dubai hospitality. I was asked to leave the hotel immediately. Let me tell you that. <laughs> do we have any Indians here? Are my Indians at? Really? Let me explain, guys. There's more people... They're just going like this. <laughs> it's 
So I, I grew up I grew up here in Dubai, but I went to an Indian school growing up. And all my teachers were Hindi, so I spoke uh, proper Hindi and everything. But what I didn't speak was Malayalam, which is what they speak in South India. And all my teachers were from South India, and they spoke Malayalam. And I'd get in trouble, right? So they'd call me, it's like, Ali, come to my office. Come. You're being a, such a baddest boy. I have to talk to you. And then they're also nosy. Another teacher would come in and be like, why, why is this boy in your class? Why, what is he doing? And then they start speaking in their language. I don't know what they're saying, but this is what it sounds like. Completely useless fellow. I don't know what to do with this boy. It's completely useless. Well, that's fine. Because when I was growing up in Dubai, we, we had like, you know, Arabic schools or, or Hindi schools. Now we have all kinds of schools, right? We have the American, the British, the Australian, the French, the German. I read that in Dubai they're opening a Singaporean school. I got a little nervous. Because see, I just got married. By the way, ladies, it's okay. I'm allowed for it. I'm just saying. Libyan school? I can't say jokes about Libya yet. Come back in six months. Maybe it'll be funny then. <laughs> no, but they're, they're starting a Singapore school. I started getting worried because what if my kid comes to me and says, Baba, Baba, I want to go to Singapore school. I can't crush his dreams. You're still not worried because you're not thinking like me. Can you imagine what a math class would be like in a Singaporean school? Okay. Open page 35. Oh, big program. John Handeban, travel. Had a 30 miles per hour. John stop to eat the noodles. Ben no stop to eat the noodles. Ben stop to eat one time. If they both arrive at exact same time, how many Jackie Chan songs play in the background? I don't know. Anyway, guys, you have a wonderful evening. That's been my time. Ali said, good night.